Hello, my name is Bastien Taormina and I'm really happy to do this video on the succession of epimantic communities on artificial structures associated with submarine power cables. Let's remind that all structures associated with the development of marine renewable energy constitute artificial reef. And as any artificial reef, this can be colonized by mobile megafauna, but also by epibantic communities. Also, the colonization of these artificial structures by epibantic communities has been documented in several case studies. Our knowledge is limited concerning artificial structures deployed in high energy hydrodynamic environments. So, in this context, the study I will show you aims to characterize the epibantic colonization of different artificial structures located in this kind of environment. For this study, we worked on the Pimpol Brea Tidal Test Site, which is located in Brittany, in west of France. Specifically, we worked on the cable used to convey the power generated by the turbine to the mainland. This cable is installed in an area presenting a hard sea floor dominated by pebbles and submitted to strong currents. Considering these properties, the cable was protected with iron half shells and stabilized with 120 different concrete matrices along the cable route. In order to characterize the epimantic colonization of these artificial structures, we chose to work on one site along the cable route. We did this using underwater imagery during diving work. Three different habitats were thus studied. The half shell with a 10 meters continuous transect, the mattress with pictures of regularly spaced units, and finally the natural seafloor with randomly placed quadrats. We performed six different campaigns from 2014 to 2018. All these campaigns produced around 1,500 pictures. To describe the epibantic communities, we choose to analyze 10 pictures per habitat and per campaign with the point count method. As a result of this analysis, we thus have the cover percentage of all the different taxa for each picture. If you want more information about this image analysis method, you can read our paper in ICES Journal of Marine Science. Here we have the results of this monitoring. In this NMDS, each point represents a different picture, and you have the barycenter for each habitat in order to follow the global temporal dynamic. Here, you only have the results of the first campaign, and we can clearly see that our two artificial habitats present different communities and natural habitats. Indeed, while the natural habitat is dominated by encrusting and erect algae on just a few accidents, the two artificial habitats are clearly dominated by acidians and barnacles. When we move a little bit forward, one year later, we can see that natural habitat is stable, but our two artificial habitats seem to change and get closer to the natural habitat. Indeed, the barnacles totally disappeared and the acidians regressed and are replaced by various erect algae and even hydroids for half shells habitat. If we look three years later this time, we can see that these changes continued, with the replacement of acidians and barnacles by erect algae, hydrids, and even kelps on the mattress. We also observe that the two artificial habitats seem to harbor different epibantic communities at the end of our survey. Furthermore, these epibantic communities seem to be more structurally complex than communities of natural habitat. To summarize our results, we showed that the artificial habitats we surveyed were submitted to an ecological succession. Barnacles were the primary settlers, followed by a wide variety of acidians, and lately occurred the development of erect algae, kelps, and hydrates. Finally, an interesting result was that artificial habitats, at the end of our survey, about different epibantic communities that were more structurally complex than those of the natural habitat. This can be explained by the characteristics of the three different habitats. As said earlier, natural habitats are dominated by pebbles, which are regularly perturbed by the high tidal currents of the area, making them too unstable for taxa to grow. These are also highly exposed to sediment abrasion. 
These two points explain why this habitat is dominated by encrusting taxa. On the other hand, the half-shell habitat offers stability as it cannot be moved by the current. Also, its moderate elevation reduces its exposure to sediment abrasion. Thus, moderately complex epibantic community can grow. And finally, mattress habitat, which are much more massive, offer the same stability, but an even higher elevation and thus an even lower level of sediment abrasion, allowing the development of complex taxa, such as the kelps. So in this really particular environment, the presence of these artificial structures due to the presence of a power cable offered a certain stability which allowed the development of a complex epimantic community previously absent in close proximity. Thank you very much for watching this video and thanks to the organizing community of EIMR Conferencing for organizing this important event. We are currently working on the scientific paper associated with this study. So if you want more information, you can follow me on my ResearchGate or Twitter account and you will be informed as soon as it is published.